Is this the Tea House podcast? And welcome back to the biggest podcast in the Southern Hemisphere. I'm here today with uh, the Duke from Canberra, Mr. Duke Didier himself. Fucking prof- Hello. <laughs> <laughs> professional MMA fighter, judo expert. No, thanks for coming on, brother. My pleasure, mate. Happy to be here. And um, <clears throat> before we um, talk about anything, I actually, I've got a boat, because obviously you're the, you're the real royalty from Canberra, the, <laughs> the, Duke, the Duke himself. And I just, um, I, I was actually up in Canberra about, about two, three months ago. What were you up there for? Um, I was doing an East Coast trip. Oh, yeah? And um, that was just one of the stops that I went through. It was yeah. actually, I think, the second stop. And um, when I was there, I got, it was a bit of a, I got a bit, bit of a Truman Show vibe to it. <laughs> I seen lots of buildings. I wasn't sure if people were inside them. They was, probably weren't, bro. Right. I was at the man-made lake there, and, and I reckon every hour the same person checked their own. <laughs> did another lap, was like... Really well, short. Were you there during lockdown or what? Like, yeah, I actually was. Oh, well, of course, it would be pretty eerie there, right? Eh? Uh, well, those buildings, they're all public servant buildings. Yeah, yeah. So those, blo- they, if they get, a, oh, they get a, a bad wind or a bad breeze, they start, they don't go to work. Yeah, So right. they're not, obviously, they're gone. Because it reminded me like the Truman Show. I was, when I was there, yeah. I was like, fuck, am I in Pyongyang or Canberra? This they is watch it. Well, especially if it, was, if it was lockdown, there'd be no one there. Yeah. Yeah, but like I said, those public service buildings, they're a waste of money as it is because they're like, they're like, fu- like they're fully in the city and everything. Yeah. And then there's like, literally, anything happens and they just go into lockdown. Some of those, some of the, they don't have people in there normally. Oh, bullshit. Yeah. So like, they just, just got empty. cardboard. Well, they just had all the health stuff. issues or health reasons because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's worse than the unions. Like, it's like anything goes wrong, public servants don't go to work. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. So. And then another thing that freaked me out. <laughs> Is this podcast just the 10 things that freaked me out about Canberra? Yeah, I'm just yeah, yeah. joking to defend it. <laughs> <laughs> no local police, only feds. That wigged me. Well, it, they're called the AFP. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's, there's, they're local. They're local. There's one in every, there's, there's, there's four stations. Trust me, there's four stations. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, know, yeah. I know there's a, there's four stations. Yeah, they're local. Don't worry, they're just called the AFP, but they're not actually, um, like it's not called Canberra Police. Yeah, yeah. They they're the AFP. So the Canberra Police in in Canberra are the AFP. Now I, I was just getting a coffee there, and I, there was a couple there, and I was fucking like, "Oh, have I done something illegal?" Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. You go out in the city, there's a lot of them. Yeah. No, nah. <laughs> nah, well, the, the actual, it was funny because the protests were going on around uh, that stage too. So They were actually having to worry about actual problems. Yeah, yeah, not so just Not just, you know, Blake's out having beers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, <laughs> not, not just the uh, the regular issue. With the just just guys going out and having fun. Yeah. yeah. That's, what they, that's what they normally police on in there. <laughs> no, nah, otherwise a pretty cool place, to be fair. It's um, it's gr- it's good, and like I said, if you don't know it, it can you, yeah, it's got that like a like that weird Truman vibe. You're like, oh wow, it's like everything's set out, everything's, but like yeah, it's got a real heart. That place, like it's 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 a, like more of a town than a than a city. Like you know, if I go out, I know every, every bloke out. Yeah, so it's pretty good. I kind of like that. Um, that's the one thing I miss is that sometimes I, like in Melbourne, you know, you go out, you you. But it does make you more friendly and it makes other people more friendly. You go out in yep. Melbourne, everyone's always happy to have a chat because they don't know anyone, you don't know anyone, so everyone's always having a chat. 100%. Whereas in, yeah, in Canberra, you're a bit more clicky because, you know, you, you, everyone they have beef with this yeah, person. Oh, you know, right. Yeah. Not, yeah, not even, not even nah, that. Not even that. Just like everyone knows everyone. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I imagine if you went there and you, you, you're in a pub and you're like, hey, it would be like going out in. Any of the pubs, like oh, in Bendigo, in Bendigo anywhere, yeah, yeah, it'd be the same thing, you know. It's a bit more clicky, and so it's harder to leave. No, nah, for sure. Well, what was, obviously, like, what was like the main reason that you moved to Melbourne? You reckon? Yeah, it was always solely for training. So solely, yeah. solely for training. So I was, I was, I was, yeah, like a, um, I was pretty set up in Canberra. Like I had a good life. <laughs> so I was, I was, I was reasonably well known. The Duke, of yeah. course. <laughs> <laughs> the five names the Duke at Canberra because my first name's Duke and I'm from Canberra. It's not even that much of a stretch, brother. <laughs> it's not even that much of a stretch. I'm, I've heard a lot cockier fight names than mine. I get, I've, I've, I've got blokes online have rapped me before, before, and they're going, "Why would you call yourself the Duke at Canberra?" Is it my name, <laughs> my birth name on my passport, on my birth certificate is Duke, and I'm from Canberra. I said, I don't think that's too much of a 
a stretch of a fight name. I thought I'd put it together. Very clever, actually. <laughs> um, it, no, so I was I was all right there, and I was working for the family business. And but honestly, deep down, it was like I knew that I had uh, more potential in me, and I was flying down to train. Um, at Resilience Training Centre in uh, Footscray and I was training with under Daniel Kelly and I was training uh, with Jimmy Crude. Oh, so um, you were already coming I, down. I was anyway. coming down. So I, when I'd have a fight, I'd come down and do a couple couple of days down and then fly back. I'd try and take a couple of days off work, fly back. So I'm sort of like, it's I'm sort of not putting into it either. So I'm sort of doing both half ass. So I'm like, work's getting the shits because I'm taking too much time off and then uh, I'm not training to the level I know that I am. And so I was at the point, I was seven and one as a pro. Um, I was like, if I'm, if I'm going to do this, let's do it. Like, yeah. Let's do it. I'm young. Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's try it. Let's like try it. And like the other thing is that when it was the back of my mind, it always has been is like, I don't want to be a bloke that was like, Born, bred, fed, and died in the same place. Yeah, it's not nothing to do with like Canberra or anywhere. I just don't want to be the guy that just lived in the same spot his entire life. And, and you're happy. You're happy to obviously go live back there, but like just not the whole 100%, time. Hundred sort percent. Of, yeah. That's what I mean. I just don't want to be someone that like you just go. Yeah. What do you know about the world if you've only lived in within like you know. 500 meters from your parents house you know like yeah, 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 you know yeah. two k's from your parents house you know and you've, got, you've just you've just done you've just around the block done a lo- loopies around Canberra. Yeah. I go, no, i'm gonna try this and i you know and it was it was really daunting going down like like i was excited it was awesome and my girlfriend at the time we'd only just started dating and she's like yeah let, like she, she just finished uni so it was perfect time for her yep. she didn't have a job like she'd fin- finished uni so she was starting to apply for jobs she goes well i haven't applied for many in Canberra. i'll just start applying in melbourne I was like, right, well, let's well, let's go, let's go. We're down next year. No, within a month, I was in Melbourne. I was living in Melbourne, and like, oh my god, just uh, yeah, it hit me hard. Like it was like just. I think I don't think it was just Melbourne. Like going from a small city to a big city, but just so many like obstacles and like yeah, just yeah. so many things. Just like anyone that's probably moved out and moved away, um, moved out of their safety barrier would understand. It's just there's a lot to. Was it was it hard not to get caught up in the lifestyle a little bit too? Because obviously Melbourne's like the, the party capital of fucking like Australia I, by far. I'm not going to lie on the biggest uh, podcast in the in the southern hemisphere. No, no, I, you can't lie. Here. I, I can't lie. No, I did get caught up in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I yeah. definitely, I definitely did get caught up in it. But like, I mean, that's uh, that's, that's something that like uh, I'm not ashamed of or anything. But like, I came down and I was like, oh fuck, here we are we're in Melbourne. But. I, I've, I've never never shied away from a drink anyway, so like I, I was a I, yeah. <laughs> Are they gonna sponsor me or not? I'm trying my best here. Hey, hurry up, <laughs> Melbourne, get on it, mate. Um, Only the cans, but <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'd always go out in camera. I love going out. Like I mean, it's just it's always part of me. <laughs> I've been I, I bounced in nightclubs for like social six, butterfly. Yeah, social butterfly. I yeah. love it. I've bounced in nightclubs for like seven years, and before that, the reason I got the job was because um. I was punching on in nightclubs too much. So like, oh, that's <laughs> yeah. sad, they said, they said you, and it was Mooseheads, the biggest nightclub in uh, Canberra. They said, you're banned or you can work here. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to work here. I just finished uni. I didn't need a job <laughs> bouncing at nightclubs. And I was like, oh, I do want to go back to Mooseheads. So I started bouncing. And that's, but it, it actually, it helped me. It makes you more of a man. Like, you I mean, yeah. you're responsible for your actions. You go in and do something silly on the weekends. Well, then you have to answer to it because you, you, you work there. So there were a couple of times there where I was still working there and banned. And banned at the same time. <laughs> and banned. <laughs> so so being a little bit mischievous. But, uh, so after you finish your shift, they're like pushing you out the door, mate. You, you, your shift's they over. They you're fucking not staying I wasn't here. the only bouncer that this has happened to. They go, he can work here, but he cannot drink here. Oh, so they just picked up all these generates punching on. Yeah, well, that's, that's exactly what, that's how they hide them. That's how you get the best bouncers. <laughs> now you don't need bouncers. You only need security guards. Yeah, yeah. Because there's not really much drama. And if there, there's too many phones, there's too many things, you can't really. But back in the day, when I started, I started in 2010, I started bouncing yeah and that was literally it was bouncing like there was there are security guards and then there's bouncers and like yeah it was not you had to be able to handle yourself and like that they, they 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 didn't know about my dude i was i was already in the strange judo team and they didn't know about any of that oh they, they didn't literally even know. just hired me on based on the fact that i they were, took care of myself in a few, nightclub a few times in front of them yeah right yeah that was that was that was it so and that bring you know you build up and you you become yeah, more of a man. So then, but then yeah, going from that Canberra lifestyle where you know everyone, and then you go out in Melbourne, it is it's like a sort of a big thing. And you know, you know I, d- I definitely had some too too many late nights when I first got down. Yeah. Um, but you know, w- wore that through. Is it is it is this before or after you went to the Commonwealth Games? This was well, 
I was I went to comic games in 2014. Yeah, yeah. So I was bouncing all through that. Oh, you, all through, all yeah, through that whole all that time? time? Yeah, all that time I was bouncing, yeah. They, they, they had to have caught on eventually that you, you were fucking... Oh, they caught on once I started working there. And I was yeah, just yeah. absolutely <laughs> just sending blokes with my hips. Like, I, <laughs> I didn't ever need to punch. Like, people would be always... When the one thing that would always irk me is someone said, oh, you... I went to this club or this club and you were working and you punched me. I said, I never hit anyone. I never needed to. I would always just wrap them up and throw them, like pretzel them. Yeah. You know, because it was like I had a cheat code. I was I was trained fighter and sober and yep. just rolling blokes up. Like it was easy to be good at that job. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you just didn't have to you had to be smart, you had to be able to talk and you had to be able to fight. But you had to but if you see if you if you're leaning your punches and that kind of thing, you, you they're gonna the, the, the clubs won't help you. Yeah. They'll just charge you. Yeah. Like they'll get, if the police come to charge you, the clubs are like, Well, mate, well we're not gonna you, you punched a bloke on the door, we're not gonna pay for your lawyers. Yeah. So it was just, you have to look after yourself. So I always knew you never crossed a line and that's the thing, I never took liberties. I was always fair. But if I had to, yeah, if I had to If you had to fold someone I up. I had to fold someone up, I could I could I could throw someone like no one else, especially like as an international judo player, drunk bloke at a nightclub, I'd, I'd have I'd have him. <laughs> <laughs> and that that was before they were blind too. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I, I, they, once you once you get him full of piss, and I'm sober. He, my dad said that because my dad was a bouncer. So that was the funny thing is that like my dad as a side job, he was also a bouncer at, at one of the big nightclubs in Canberra, and he always said that he goes when I first started going out, he said to me, he goes, uh, yeah, you, you got to remember with the bouncers. They're not hired because uh, they, they're hired because they can fight. They're all mic'd up. They're sober. There's more of them than you. Yeah. And I, I, I you know, I've been, uh, you know, I've had my fair share of trouble here and there. I've never, ever, ever tried to fight a bouncer. You know, so. uh, it never ends well. No, not would, would, wouldn't suggest it. No, they, wouldn't suggest it. They always know? take you where the cameras aren't. I hate that. <laughs> where, I hate, where they aren't? Yeah. I, I hate when you get taken there. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's not where you want to be, mate. No. So, so you, you came down to Melbourne in 2019, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is that is that that's sort of when COVID sort of kicked yeah, off, wasn't it? So that's exactly right. So that's what happened. So I came down and literally the first week I was settled in, I tore my tricep. I had a fight booked uh, with Stephen the Warby. The first week? On, yeah, I had a fight booked with Stephen Warby on Eternal. Stephen Warby too. Yeah, fight. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Israel Anderson, his training partner. He's yeah. a beast. Fought Jimmy. I went the five rounds with Jimmy. Yeah. He's, he's a beast. Like, I came down, and that was going to be my first flight down here. Boom, tore my, tore my bicep. Well, not my tricep, I tore that later. But tore my bicep, tore my bicep. I was with actually training with Jimmy on the wall. Went for a takedown, pulled, and I just felt bang, just rolled up. And Sammy Greco's looked at me and said, that's a torn bicep, son. And um, straight, to, about, straight, to, straight, to, straight to hospital, <laughs> as I went. And then, um, so that fight was off. I was on the shelf for three months. And then um, I started easing back. I was, and then I was just working, like working, obviously a normal job, driving around, and that's pretty not what I came down for. So I'm job working, torn bicep, trying to, you know, and I can't train at all. Can't do the proper rehab and so. Oh, well, so I you can, can do the do proper do. rehab. That's it, though. Like it's like, an, but I'm not really. Yeah, it's not. It's not good. And yep. then, um, and then, yeah, then COVID hits, and then, and then so because then I was signed to fight on AFC against. Uh, Joseph Henley, it was an international fighter, fighting American, and he was, he was pretty good. So I was going to fight him, and then COVID hit, that got cancelled, and then literally like two weeks after COVID, just as everything was getting a bit wacky, I um, I found a, a blood clot in my leg again. And I'd had a blood clot a few years prior, and I thought it was all fixed, I thought it all gone away anyway, so and that just started just a spiral of absolute hell. So I had this... Blood clot, and then uh, how do you know? Is it like a bruise that? No, it's pops like up? it's like your whole leg um, gets like when you do exercise, your whole leg goes fat. Like it goes fat. Like um, so you know when you're if you, if you, if you're ever on the squat rack and you know if you if you go to exhaustion on your leg and you know like they start getting jelly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like that for one leg. And oh, so then, and so like it hurts to walk, and then next thing you know, it actually goes bright red. So it's it's like the blood. Can, there's a there's a problem with the circulation. The blood can't get in and out. So yep. your whole leg just fills up with blood, and it's just absolutely like it's the worst. And like and it's really serious. Cause so every time you trained, is that how you notice that your leg would just fatten up? Well, it was stuff just like getting that. worse and worse. And then one, no, but then once your leg, you can't walk. I can't walk from here to here to there. So oh. like, I, I so we're straight to hospital. And then the doctors said, like, not only will you never fight again, they're like, you're going to have some serious issues moving forward, like, with, with like, exercise. And 
because I knew I'd, I'd been told a couple of years prior I had a weird vein structure that I didn't ever knew about. So I, vein I, structure. I, like I, instead of having with the, oh, with the camera, instead of having <laughs> instead of having down the stomach, it goes here, and then you've got veins and they come out. Mine just goes straight down to the legs. And there's no like coming out. Oh right, that's the medical term. Uh, <laughs> Professional. <laughs> that's the medical term. I got <laughs> I got weird veins in my legs. Anyway, so. <laughs> Um, so they, so they said I'd never fight again. And I'm like, oh no. And they said, but and they said, oh, it'll get better in three months. I didn't do a surgery this time. And I was like, oh, good. I'm glad they didn't do a surgery. I didn't want to do a surgery because you were just hoping it sort of get better. Yeah, I thought it'd get better on so I'd take the blood thinning medication. I thought it'd get better. And yeah. then after three months, it hadn't re- got better at all. And I was like, and then there was this one doctor, like a by you were doing it by teleconference. Yeah. And he said, look, they're not going to fix you in the public system but there will be someone that can fix you um i didn't even know you do it like private vein surgeons like i didn't know about any of this stuff bro like so i um he said but someone will so i've got i've called a gp in in, in where i live like not a family not, not an old gp like just some just some random and gp and he said yeah he said um well um there's a dr william campbell in richmond he he looks like he he, he he deals with veins. I, I think he, he mainly focuses in varicose veins f- for the elderly, but go, maybe him. And I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever, we'll go try. And I'm like, fuck. I thought I didn't wasn't even thinking about it. I was like, oh, we'll go in. I was, I was I was hoping that the public system would come back to me with some kind of option. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was in the system with them. And you didn't really want to like have to like fork out a stupid amount of money. Or wasn't anything. even I had I had private health. Oh yeah. But but yeah. Well, I wasn't worried. It was more about like. I don't want to just be getting just told no over and over. Yeah. Like, I don't want to just get. T- so we went in there and then um, I was looking around and like I'm like uh, this bloke's got old rugby photos. And I'm like my old man played for the Wallabies. I'm like this man's got old rugby photos everywhere. I was like oh, and he looked in and I met him and he was like he said oh I think I think I can, he goes, I think I can fix it. I don't think it's fair. I have a sporting background too. I don't think it's fair that you you don't have. Um, uh, the rest of your career, I think I can do something. And I was like, oh, are you, are you a rugby guy? And he's like, yeah, I played for the Wallabies from 1984 to 1990. And I was like, oh, my dad played for the Wallabies in 1990. Do you know him? Do you know him, bro? And he's like, he's like oh, I played with your father. I was like, oh. So then, and that was that. That was when I knew. I was like, oh, we're good now. We're, we're good sweet. Now. This is we're getting done. This is getting wrapped up. We're fixed now. I got a, I got someone that cares about me down here. <laughs> I've fluked it of any little, I, know, I could have gone anywhere in the whole world. I reckon I was in the best I reckon it didn't matter where I went. I reckon that was the best place for me. And it, and I, that was probably the start of turning things. Like, I had a lot of dark days since because, I mean, they fixed it. Well, they said they fixed it. He fixed it. But he goes, when I woke up from the surgery, he goes, Look, we've actually only fixed one side. We've got to fix the other now. I'm yeah. like, oh, my God. So it took another three to six months. And before and then you know, I put on like, I was like 120 kilos. Like, I'm 101 kilos now. Like so 120 Yeah, kilos. I was like 118 or something. Yeah, I was like stupid fat. And like, yeah, just trying to get back into it. And then the body's giving out. And like, I'm like, oh. Was, it, was that sort of hard to sort of trim that back as well on top of like the injuries and the also getting told all the time, like, oh, like obstacle after obstacle. Yeah. Like, oh, this leg's fixed now. You got this one. Well, and a couple of times I like lost sight of it. I'm like, well, what am I fucking doing? Yeah. I'm like, what am I, what am I fucking doing down here? Like, well, what, 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 am I kidding myself? I was like, and I'm dragging my fucking girlfriend down here. And I'm like, and I'm like, what have I... Like I'm, not, like I'm, I'm, I'm not a fucking fighter. I'm, I'm not a fucking, and like I'd, I'd forgotten that I'd, I fucking who I was. Like I fucking literally did, especially during lockdown. I'm like, I'm just a fucking like I've got, I've got nothing going here. I don't need to go home and get a public service job and just fucking yeah, just, public just, service. Just job. put my head down and just 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 be happy with normal. Yeah. And I was like so many times, and then um, uh, yeah, slowly but surely. I was like getting a bit more training and training. And then Jimmy's gone, fuck, you feel good heavy, mate. You feel good heavy. Like you feel hard to move. And I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, them heavyweights, they can't grapple. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I stay up. Maybe so I stay heavy. So you, you've just seen a route to, to – uh... That's what I thought. I thought I, I saw a route to a contract. I was like, maybe that – I mean, I had a good record. I was like, I just need one or two. And then I'll just take, take something. And short notice is easy at heavyweight because you don't have to make weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, – that I took, I finally came back. I COVID tore my tricep, bulged three discs in my neck. That was in the prep for the fight with this bloke. Like recently, that was no the the fight oh, I had fight in February. That, sorry, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I got in the cage. I don't even like looking at the fight back because like, um, and I was a, it was an old training partner, loving to death, and 
he came. He came that day. Like he literally, he did. He he is a Tonga bloke, Canberra, and he brought half of Tonga with him. Yeah. <laughs> he showed up, and I'm like, I know I can beat him because I've trained with him. So in my head, I'm like, I just got to do what I got. But I was so emotional. I had like um, an adrenaline dump. Yep. I don't know if it, it's a weird thing. And if you never had one, you literally after the first round, first round was fine. I couldn't put my arms up. Oh, at all that fatigue. Couldn't move. Couldn't do anything. Just for because the adrenaline dump. Yeah, you obviously got Could, couldn't was exhausted, like emotionally, just like and so you're like, like it's just a weird thing. And because I was so amped up, so excited, so emotional, and I'm back in my hometown as well for the fight. It was like a recipe for disaster. So I'm just like, oh, let's go. Oh, fucking, I can't wait. So he came out to two walkout songs instead of one. Like, I fucking milked it hard. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, did you yeah, come out to two walkouts? Yeah. <laughs> uh, fucking, yeah. Just like really. Yeah, I was out. like, I was coming out in a robe like Ric Flair. Like, I did it. Like, I really milked it. And I was like, I came out and it was actually a good lesson for me. Like, I won the fight. Yeah, but Jesus Christ, it was ugly, and my face looked like like a butcher shop. Like I was absolutely and Top and they weren't from strikes on the feet. He was in guard. He was on his back punching up. Oh, really? And that's how he got his most most of his big shots in. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. And then I'm like, I'm going. And then I've talked to a couple of people, and I'm like, I'm going back down the light heavyweight. Like I know I can make that. As yeah. 93, I was like, but also like. As a personal thing, I was like, oh, I look like shit. I was like, I don't want to look like this. I, like, I want to be shredded yeah, again. Yeah, I want to look. I used to look like a freaking machine. Yeah. I want to look like that again. Yeah, yeah. So I started cutting down, and that was the thing. I started cutting down, and then I got down to about 100 kilos, 101, 100, 101, and then one FC. <laughs> Do you want to fight heavyweight next week? I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so, yeah, here I am. The next time I'm fighting 117 kilo Uzbekistani. Yeah, I know. He was a fucking beast. Let her ride, but <laughs> like, like let it ride. I'm happy to be here. And like I said, I'll take any of them down. Hey. I don't care. I don't care how big you are. Like I, I'm, I'm here to play. I thought I was. I thought I was watching the new Fast and Furious and the new bad guys just rolled out. For, you, you're ready to fight. Yeah, he's a fucking <laughs> scary looking cut. <cousin. laughs> he I was, was a big boy too. I was like, Fuck. yeah, he was a big boy. And like he has a has a like a, some heavy hands. Like I saw his highlights. And I was like, oh well, like. Like I, I knew if I just did what I did and like I knew I'd be able to get my way with him. And that, the, the thing was for 2.47 ra- 2. uh, rounds, <laughs> 2.5 of those rounds, I f- did exactly what I said I would. I, I agree too because yeah. I, I watched that fight as well and I, actually, yeah. I even messaged yeah, you straight messaged away. I, saw, I was yeah, like, I that saw. was the biggest robbery yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Hey, I, like I said, like I... Uh, I'm the one that's. I knew the rules. Oh, I didn't listen in the rule meeting properly. Yeah, yeah. They said they said they, they said we knew that they they were going to score the fight, not round by round, and that's fine. That's whatever. Oh, so it wasn't scored by round by round. No, if it was, obviously I, I win. Yeah, okay. but it wasn't. It was round, and but then there's also damage, um, and those knees. So the, I went for the shot, and he blocked it, and then I felt a knee to my head. I went. Well, they're going to wrap this fight up like that's disqualification. Yeah. Then another one and another one. I was like, oh no, that was what they were talking about in the meeting. Yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't listen properly because I thought that the, they said soccer kicks were out. Yeah. And yeah. I thought that meant it was just back to normal rules, but it wasn't. They, those were allowed. Oh, so soccer's are out though. Soccer's are out. So there's this just, just soccer kick, curb stomping some bloke. You're not allowed. Yeah. But like the knees on the head on a grounded opponent are loud. Yeah, because that's how Demetrius Johnson got done too. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, oh, wow, well, like, oh, this is loud. But then I'm like moving around. And I, didn't, I didn't even have a lump on my head, like nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, like they're the rules. So I learned. And like I said, I was more grateful than anything. I went from, like I said, I went from someone doubting myself so much about everything to sign to, you know, the biggest uh, MMA promotion in Asia. Yeah. Like, I'm sweet now. Like I'm good. Like I got nothing to complain about. Like losing, getting robbed, is is not something that I'm. Uh, uh, you know, on my list of problems, it's not up there. Hundred percent. Yeah. And like, and look, at the end of the day, too. Like if you if you went out there and performed the way you sort of like wanted to perform and stuff like that, you put 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 yourself on show. How can you can't really be too sad about the end result, can you? Because it's like ah, exactly. Well, mate, I took it on week's notice. Yeah. And the other thing was is that like there's a couple of changes I'd make, obviously, but I said I was going to walk in there. I was going to close the distance. I was going to take him down. And I was going to work him over, and I did exactly that. And like I said, they stood me up in the third, and it all went to it all went to shit in the last two minutes. But other than that, you give me a f- not even a full camp. You give me half a camp. Yep. 
and I'll show you. And you give me someone a little closer to my weight as well. But like I said, I'm not complaining. I'm not. I'm not sucking. I mean, uh, it's the first time I've, I've got to take a short notice fight. And mate, I felt great. There was no pressure on me. I had, didn't have that adrenaline dump. Biggest fight in my um, biggest fight in my career, and didn't have an adrenaline dump. I just walked out there, and uh, just yeah, got got to work. So it's like it's sweet now. And yeah. like I said, now it's now it's cool that I can say that that that's work. So it's cool. Hundred percent. And it'd be like you like it'd be sick to be able to say, oh yeah, I get paid to go overseas because like even the next fight could be fucking wherever, and you, you're getting paid to go overseas and yeah, live your dream basically. So that yeah, exactly right. And like when I was in the judo team, I'd always. Be very aware of when I said it. I would never say, "Oh, I'm a professional athlete." I'd always say, "I'm a um, full time athlete." Because yeah, there's okay. no money. Uh, uh, judo it's actually actually costs you money because you know, you don't get funded for everything, so it actually costs you money. So I would always, and you know, it's not a cool thing to say. I oh, so what do you do? Oh, I'm a full time athlete. And so that's and then when I was a pro MMA fighter, you're like, oh, I'm a pro MMA fighter. I, I, well, why are you a project manager? Then? Like, if you're pro. So now I can literally say, straight face, hand to heart, you go, yeah, well, what do you do for work? Oh, I'm a pro fighter. So uh, that, sh- show me. I yeah. don't have any other jobs. <laughs> I coach as I well. Coach, I coach, that's it. I coach. I'm immersed in the sport. But like I said, it's not, um, yeah, my life's good now, Barry. So well, I'm, a, I'm a happy man. 100%. And that'd be, that'd be a good, because I've heard you say too, like, especially coming from the times where you've had like a rough two years and stuff like that and yeah. to finally reach like a, a point where there's light at the end of the tunnel or <clears throat> yeah. not even that, like just a different route that you get to go where you're like, fuck yeah, there's so much to look forward to sort of thing. Yeah, very. It's like the thing, I'm on an adventure now. Like it, it, instead of going, oh, maybe I'll get a fight in, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll, maybe I'll get one last one in, see what happens. And then now it's like, well, here we go again. Let's go. Like, yeah. let's, like let's go. And like, then the, and the show goes on, and like that's that's been my life, and that's why I love it. Like that's what I mean. I was I was sad because I didn't think I, there'd be times when I thought maybe that maybe my circus of a life's come to an end. Yeah, and um, yeah, I've I've just proven the circus wrong again. We keep we keep rolling, baby. So. What, what, what are you saying? Never boring or something? Yeah, yeah. I told my girlfriend. I said to us when we started dating, I was drunk, and I was like, oh, maybe we should have a chat. And she's like, oh, yeah. She's probably like, oh, what's he want to chat about? <laughs> well, uh, no, this is when we like to task around. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll just be official. And <laughs> I'm not good at that stuff. And then she's like, I was like, well, I said, but I warn you, <laughs> it's never going to be boring. I'll tell you one ha- thing. As a warning. Yeah. It's never going to be boring. And I have followed through on that promise. <laughs> Hands to heart. Yeah. I, I heard a, um, I heard a funny story that, uh, you missed an email from UFC scouts. <laughs> <laughs> or no, it was, a, it, was a, it was a Facebook message. So yeah. I won the Australian Brace Light Heavyweight title. Yeah. Um, and then turns out that night, uh, you know, you've got, so you got your Facebook profile. Yep. Then you got your Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that my page is my, like, like my athlete page, yeah, yeah, yeah. camera page. That used to be a big thing back in the day. Not much anymore. It's more like you, you don't get much traction on Facebook anymore. No, so it's like more like Instagram. It's and stuff more now. Instagram. So like, but back in the day, you'd have your your personal page, and then the only other way you could reach someone like would be your page. Yeah. So you, so I had a page, and, and apparently, I just three years later, I checked. There's, I find out there's junk, and then there's like a spam. Of the junk, f- I don't know how they'd sorted it, but I got this message from this guy, and he was said, "Hey, just letting you know that we're um, uh, I work for UFC. Uh, we build a database. Um, we need. We'd love to have you on the database. Um, sorry for approaching this way. This is just how we con- currently contact athletes. We'd like to get you on our database." And I'm like, three years later, I'm like, "Oh, for fuck's." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. I didn't even write back. No, yeah, yeah. No, and three like, years later, it's too late. Oh, I was like, three years later, I was like, oh fuck. I've blo- like, I was like, probably God doesn't even work there. I checked, I checked him on Twitter. I was like, yeah, he works for UFC. I was like, I don't know. It wasn't a fight or anything. It wasn't a contract, but yeah, it was yeah. like, they, what they used to do. On the short list. What they used to do is they used to get them on the radar and they'd put you on a short list. But then again, like the people I've heard that got on the short list, none of them I've heard have ever got really a fight out of it. So oh, yeah. So that's what I say to myself to make myself feel better yeah, about yeah, it all. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I was like, ah, oh, because I was 6-0. and 
I was here. I went to the Com Games. I was six and I won an Australian title. Had some accolades behind you. I was starting you. to really get a little bit of hype. And then, yeah, I apparently had missed a fucking. And I'm pretty good with social media. Like I'm pretty, I'm pretty on top of this kind of technology. That marketing so degree, me, man. yeah. For, that's what I mean. That's, that's what I've done, and it's what I've always done. And so for me to miss that, I was like spewing. But then again, I was like, oh, fuck. if it's meant to be, it's up to me. So <laughs> it, it does it. It wouldn't it wouldn't annoy you as much now though because now now you've sort of got onto a big a big stage anyway. Yeah, though. asked me three weeks ago maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, before, before, the, before the contract, I was a bit fucking dirty. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, look, was, I was always like, yeah, like there's ups and downs, right? Like, and that's what I mean. Like right now, I'm on and up, so I'm like, I'm good, yep. I'm good. But like, yeah, there's so many stories like that where you're just like, ah, oh, fuck, this and that. Like the one loss I had in Australia, Nathan Reddy, I swear, like. Um, like I thought, like I had one of those adrenaline dumps. Like, he's, no, nothing to take away from Nathan. He's a beast. Hasn't lost since. Yeah, like he's a beast. But I'm just like, oh, if I wasn't like, if I didn't have completely plonk it in the end of the first, same thing happened. Plonked it in the end of the first. So I was just fighting on fumes, and I lost by decision. So like, and I was winning the third. I was on top, and he he swept me. And I'm thinking, fuck, if I could have just hung on for two minutes there, I'll be seven and I then. With, then we, you know, and it was, and, and I had the turns out I had the clot issue. I didn't have proper blood going in my legs. Oh, true. In one leg, the whole time they have fixed that now. But yeah. like, so not to make excuses or anything, but there's little things like that. There's little things like that in your career. But you're like, uh, deep down, you're like, no, 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 no. You lost on the day, and you know what? You didn't check your fucking spam folder. So like, it's yeah. like it's not one's fault. It's not like, not like no sook, no no carry on. It's easy to blame other people. It is actually easier and I've learned it's taken years and years, but it's you know, accountability and and not harping on what's happened. Yeah. It's it's a better life. Fuck without without making excuses though, but can you look at it from like a positive way and go, like, fuck, I did this and that with like the clot issue and stuff like that, like and obviously now you've probably matured way more as a fighter and stuff and yeah. like you probably manage your emotions better to not get Adrenaline I think so. dumps and stuff like that. How do you even stop an adrenaline dump? Like, is it just like keeping calm and yeah, stuff? Yeah, it's keeping calm. Yeah, yeah, it's keeping calm. Like, it's just about keeping your like, uh, like anxieties and your levels down. Yeah. And so instead of jumping around like a madman before the fight, um, every time I every time I would sort of just start to go up, I'd be like, bring it back down. Breath work, breathing, down, Mr. Miyagi. Would just be like, yeah, fuck. <laughs> it's all good It's all good Like every time like, And then so instead of like Whacking my head around And fucking Because I was like I was thinking about it Before my MMA fights I'm like fuck I was like I'd always say to myself I go This fucking bloke Has done Has not gone through What I've gone through And has not done What I've done I'd, And I'd smack myself In the head And I'd go Fuck this guy Fuck him Yeah yeah And then now, Then I'm like oh, I used to never do that In judo When I was fighting It that like that, You know Out of ridiculously high level of judo i was never doing that i was like what if i started doing that now yeah i was always calm as i was like give, give myself a slap in the face and go out so i'm like i gotta go back to that i gotta go back to what got me to the dance yep so that's basically and it was you know it's, it's only taken me 26 years to get to that point so <laughs> 26 years on the mats and we finally worked it out but like i said uh, the ups and the downs all the stuff that's happened has just made me actually like not just a better fighter but a better person as well yeah because like i was i was always just young brash arrogant ass like i i remember always saying like i don't get injuries like, i don't care i don't get old i don't like, just drink everywhere yeah i, I, I just, don't care i don't I get don't injuries care. I don't, and i have uh, personal problems i don't have any problems like i used to always and i always say stuff like that so it's maybe karma just catching up with me that i thought i was invincible for so long and then finally there was some vulnerability and i swear it's just made me like i'm so much more grateful and aware as well i'm so much more aware that's my that's maturity as well i suppose yeah um but i'm more aware and more grateful and and just enjoying the enjoying you know what i have left of my of my career because uh, i know now like i've probably only got you know a f five years tops probably left and then i'm then i'm gonna have to just be a coach so um maybe a bit longer but like what, what i've got now is this this whole new sort of perspective on things as opposed to I'm just gonna go out there and just smash everyone because that was always my, that was always just my attitude. I just yep. I, go, I don't care. I'm not gonna respect anyone. I'm not gonna smash anyone. And now the older I get, the more I'm like going. I actually a lot of the the, the martial arts sort of teachings, a lot of you know, respect and um, constantly learning, constantly being better yourself, living your whole life 
uh, not just the time in the sport. This stuff's starting to like creep into me, and it would make sense. I've spent you know, 26 years doing martial arts. Yeah. So it would make sense that some of this stuff has finally rubbed off on me. But, I, yeah. I was actually going to say that because, like, obviously the martial arts lifestyle and stuff, it, like, going from obviously, like, there's days where you'd be destroying people, throwing cunts left, right, folding them up, yeah. whatever. But then there, obviously there'd be the days where someone would get you or people yeah. that you wouldn't expect. So it'd be like a, a constant. As much as it, it builds your confidence up, you'd be humbled on a regular basis, so it would keep you really grounded. Uh, always, always. And, and as a fighter, even though I'd charge around, um, you know, I, when I was younger, I'd charge around like I was the man. If, you, if you're if you a fighter, you know there's always someone better. Like, they're the people they're the people that are actually know that you're not – they know they're not the best because yeah. they've, they're the ones that have been humbled. Every fighter has fought someone better than them. Yeah. And more, more often than not – there's a lot of people better than them. Yeah. And they know that. So Even the champions. Even, even the champions know that there's someone who can beat them in their day. Yeah. So it, it's actually, yeah, that's a thing as well. Like, you know, you can charge around. You might be better than this person and that person, but you know you're not the best. You know you're not, the, you're not a killer. Because the, the more time I've lost so many times in my life, like, that's what I mean. And if, if I think people need to learn how to lose just as much as they need to learn how to win. Oh, I think I'm sure. probably a better loser than I am a winner, to be honest. Like, you know, like so I'm, you're a shit winner. Yeah, I'm saying. a shit winner. <laughs> I'm a, I, on camera. <laughs> on camera. I, no, I'm that. getting better. I'm getting better, <laughs> I promise. My dad told me after fighting Canberra, he said, just be a good winner, mate. If you yeah, win, it's a good winner. That was basically him saying, do not carry on too much. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a fuck with. Don't <laughs> carry, yeah, don't be a fucking knob. <laughs> And I am. I'm being a good winner, good loser. I like, uh, you know, <laughs> however it comes now is, like I said, I think that comes with maturity as well. Like, that's just, I don't know. I was just, I was always pretty wild. <laughs> I'm having to learn these. I'm the best at learning things the hard way, so. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was going to, I had a thought today, right, because obviously your dad played for the Wallabies and stuff and yeah. you've got a rugby background and stuff. Do you reckon rugby helps MMA in like an explosive way to some degree because obviously the Volk he's come from rugby background. Well, and stuff yeah, like he came that. from rugby league. Um, yeah, and he's like um, an athlete. They definitely cross trained all the league teams. Yeah, and a lot of the union teams cross trained. The Raiders got me in last year. The Canberra Raiders they got me in last year to, to just like just come in and check out the place and and um, take part in one of their grappling sessions. Yeah, they've all got grappling programs. Oh, do they? So yeah, yeah, that's like a big part of it. Yep. Not just cross training, like because of the, the league they they contact bang. And there's so much contact. That's just like a grapple. So they're obviously using the same techniques that, that wrestlers use um, and some stuff from judo and jiu-jitsu. So, yeah, there's definitely – yeah, there's a lot of avenues for fighters. If, if, if you know enough about fighting and rugby, you can – yeah, there's, there's definitely some knowledge to be, to be shared between the sports. Uh, and rugby players, I'll always say the first thing when a rugby player comes and does jiu-jitsu or MMA – when a rugby player comes and does jiu-jitsu or MMA, the first thing I tell him is like, well, you already know how to do a double leg. You already know how to – you already know a double leg takedown. It's a tackle, mate. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, that's uh, – most rugby players do know at least one one technique in fighting straight away. Because so. oh, you always, like, hear about, like, other countries and stuff picking on, like, Australians and, like, UK people for not being able to, to wrestle and stuff like that. Yeah. And – I've always thought like fuck it'd be sick if like Australia and stuff did like wrestling at like, like freestyle wrestling and stuff like at school. But yeah, well that's the thing, and the same with judo. Yeah, Eastern Europe, Asia, they do judo or wrestling at the schools. They do. Well, you, Eastern Europe is a lot of wrestling yeah. and um, and it, judo as well, but uh, and Asia, sorry, Asia is a lot of judo, a lot of judo, like Korea, Japan, they all do it at the schools. Yep. So when I was a kid, I used to, like, when I was thir from 13 onwards, I was getting sent over to high schools in Japan to train. Oh, so you, you've been overseas for judo and, like, training as, like, a right, teenager? I've been to Japan 20 times. Oh, that's it. I've been all over. I went to, in one year, I went to Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan twice, each country. I've been everywhere, bro, yeah. like for judo. Like I've been all around the world fucking 10 times over. Oh, that's fucking cool. Yeah, so, so that's what I mean. Like I've had a life already. Like, But like I went everywhere and I, and uh, France and Korea and Japan, they've got it in the schools. Like yeah, they're, yeah. And oh, obviously heaps more countries than that, but they're the ones I went to. So when I was in high school, I was going to train with other high schoolers and they are killers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they have got, they have, it's, a, it's their subjects at school. They do it twice a day. Oh, they got a subject at school fucking... They do it twice a day. Oh, so they do judo in the morning, 
bit of school, bit of school, bit of school, tune on your afternoon. That'd be a good way to break the day up, really, though, to be honest. Six hours of judo, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend wouldn't, it for no, anyone. Well, it'll make you very good. Yeah, the, jo- <laughs> the, the joints in the body might fucking fall off. Well, that's what they they just do, uh, like... The, that's why they were so good because they just they have so many people doing it and just the only the strong get through yeah. and, then, and then the last man standing is then, okay you're in the team yeah, Darwin series yeah like well that's what our French man hit for the, uh, the AIS the first time the AIS did a junior judo team that was the Australian the NTID and they just got all these young juniors in and literally by the end of the camp they said we're picking 20 out of these 60 by the end of the camp there was probably about 25 people left because yeah, yeah, he yeah. just flogged everyone and just said right well anyone else is soft so, yeah. so I, I didn't pick anyone that <laughs> well, went home well, you so, kinds of pussies yeah <laughs> that's what he said right, no, that's pretty much you're like oh well, there's 25 you five spastics okay you 20 can stay and that's pretty much how they picked it <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking ripping. I'll, I'll rate that highly. So really, so really, you had an advantage to the rest of Australia because you lived next to the Australian Institute of Sport. That's in Canberra, um, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I, I had, yeah, I had a little advantage. <laughs> Bro, have you been there, AIS? AIS, oh, I have a ago. gripe to pick with the AIS. Yeah, AIS yeah, yeah. is dead. When I went there, when I was a kid, and I got told, "Would you like to come and train with the with with the with the Australian team and the Australian camps? Would you like to come in?" I was like, "Oh my god, yes, yes, yeah, I would. yeah please, oh, please." And I get flogged, but I'm like, "Oh wow, you go there and it's like the elite sports, the swimmers and the rowers and everything. Like, wow, look at this." You go there now. I went there in 2016. I was getting ready for an Olympic trial, at the Oceania Championships, and they told me I couldn't have breakfast or lunch. They said you can't have lunch at this time because we've got the New Zealand under 16 swim team and they're booked for lunch right now. I was like, where are we? I said, where are we? They just care about money. They just go, oh no, they're booked in here. I said, but they're the New Zealand. So, so what, uh, you've lost sight of why this place was open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, to help Australian athletes I've get I've spoken to about this a couple of times. I've, I've, I've swung it in the media. Canberra Times wrote something about this. Oh, I'm not they? happy about it at all. You've been really chucking it in the media. Oh, I don't like the AIS one bit. I think they're getting a little better now because they're not as centralised because they're like – because when I went there, it was a who's who when you're like, wow, that's that person, that's that person. But yeah. now it's like – like school groups Yeah Because it's like they, no, one, no one wants to go out there Because it's you know if Anyone that's been to AIS That's not Canberra That's not Canberra That's not Canberra It's not Canberra Coming, go down from, the, south, coming from the Duke Go mate. down south Go down south of Canberra Go to any pub Ask if you've seen Duke If they say yes Don't go near them <laughs> <laughs> If they know him They're not good blokes Go down there Don't go Yeah if they know me They're not good blokes <laughs> Stay there's, away from them, they're in trouble. There's probably better people out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. And, um, Jesus. What, I was going to say, what's the, what's the line in training between, like, obviously trying not to hurt your partners and training for an actual real life fight experience? Yeah. And it's like, because obviously you have to there. try, you obviously have to train hard because otherwise they get lazy in a fight, for example. It's, it's a fine line. The final one, and we, uh, uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. The funny one is, 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 is me and Jimmy, bro, we've like, well, how'd it go? It went first time I was rolling with him, and I, I, um, broke his ribs accidentally. All, all these are all accidents. The, we we're just rolling, and his, and his ribs broke when we we're rolling, and he fought Steve Warby the week later. That's what, yeah, he broken ribs, he fought Warby. Then, I was with him. I tore my bicep. Then, I I was trying to throw him, and that's how he did his ACL. Th- then, they possibly you just need to stop being possi- mates. Possibly, <laughs> no, possibly he knocked me out in training. <laughs> I don't know if it's related. I don't know, but then he, he was in front of me, and then I was knocked out. <laughs> but look know. at this—it's just back, forth, back, <laughs> back, forth, back, forth. And I'm like, that's just like it's just like, and it's just it's just because we're just like, and it's like if you go light, we're too retarded. So it's like it's go heavy, and like that's just uh, that's a good example though. It's like, it's like what do you do? Like fuck, you got to look after your partners because you need them there every week. Yeah, that's right. So you got to look after each other. But and, and other side of it is, and I'm learning this the older I get. I'm like, I I don't think you need to be fucking going to war every Friday. You don't need it. That's how you get brain damage, isn't it? Surely. Who said that? Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd you say, bro? <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't know. Like it's yeah, I think it's uh, and it's like studies are showing like you don't need to do that. Like and like 
training showing like a lot of gyms are not doing it now so i think it's just about controlling it and it's about it's about trust as well and it's about being at a high level like other than that little string of little uh, indiscretions with me and crude back and forth i don't think i'm i'm a reasonably safe person to train with and um you know most people are at a high level you know you can especially in the grappling you can look after someone but yeah, things happen though. It's again, it's, it's a still fu- fighting. It's a like, fuck sport. Like, yeah, it's fucking cage fighting, bro. Like, like, there's not that many things that aren't allowed. So like, things are gonna go wrong. Hundred percent. It's just about it's just about minimizing your risk and also doing your recovery and everything like that. Like, I've got like I've got one of my good mates and and um, <laughs> he's like a lifesaver to me, the combat osteo, uh, Luke Smith. He's and he's looking after Jimmy's. Uh, um, rehab too yep. He's been looking after me And like basically Keeping me just Alive Like he's just Keeping me ticking along Fixing yep. my back And like that That kind of thing's really important It's like you know Servicing a car Like you need that At a high level If you're flogging yourself Every week You need to be yeah. Rehabilitation's like One of the main Well And I've also started Getting into like I love this And my friends Are going to hate me For saying it I love I love uh, Cold plunges Cold showers like I'm real big Get, on this now. Getting so around it. A cold showers in the morning, every morning now. I have a cold shower. Even during this winter, I have a cold shower. Start calling you Wim Hof. Yeah, yeah. Like, mate, make it, make winter, make it your summer. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's what I'll say. But um, I'm doing sauna and cold plunge once a week now as well. And I think that's really important. So, yeah, so I'm out in power and foot's great. Just doing like a 25 in the sauna, 10 minutes in the cold plunge, ice, ice, and then 15 sauna, five in the cold. And I'm just a new man afterwards, and I find like, I don't know this. I'm no scientist, but I know if I feel good. That you know, that's working. You know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. not the sort of person to go and uh, research stuff, but I just I'm a trial and error guy. <laughs> and everything, bro. I'm a trial and error guy, and uh, and I find that it really really helps. Like I, I feel like a new man. I sleep better, but also my body just feels so much better after. And cold for some reason, cold shower in the morning. I go from not I, I struggle to wake up in the mornings and I go bang cold. Oh fuck, oh, I'm fucking alive here. Ready to rumble. Let's yeah, go. I'm alive. And I'm telling you, if anyone struggles to wake up in the morning, man up or woman up. Put you in the chest, go in the shower, turn it straight on cold for 30 seconds, less, 20 seconds. That's all we need. Boom, wake, right out. You're ready to fucking give the day a good one. Is it, oh, I've heard too, like it's also good for your mental as well. Like, cause you're starting the day by doing something you don't really want to do. That's ex- that's a really good point. Yeah. So that way you're, you're sort of like, all right, I can do anything today. I've done this fucking shit, fucking cold shower. Exactly right. And that's what I think, like, I, that's why I, sometimes I like slowly start my day and I'm like, fuck, oh because I know my whole day is about to start. I struggle to eat or uh, uh, anything in the morning, so I just always have, always just hate eating, hate breakfast. So the first thing I'm going to do in the morning, I'm going to have a big protein shake, which has like a banana, oats, protein, like blueberries, everything. Right? Yeah. It's a big, thick, fucking uh, stupid thing. Yeah. And a cold shower. That's what I have every fucking morning. And I go, fuck. And I'm like, sometimes, and then, and then usually on a Monday, I'm going to get my head punched in at 10 a.m. Yeah. On a Wednesday, I'm doing fucking hard ass grappling grounds with fucking UFC fighters and Com Games wrestlers. Yeah. And then on fucking Friday, I'm like, all right, well, I've got till Friday afternoon to stress about sparring. But like every morning is something I don't want to do. I said that the other day to a mate at training. I said, all I do every day is shit I just don't want to do. And I said, I said all every day. And then but then but then in, in totality, in all all of it, geez, I'm getting philosophical. In all of it though, it's what I want to do. Yeah, that's right. But it's comprising of lots of little things I don't want to do. And I'm never happier than when I'm eating right and then I'm getting good sleep and I'm having my cold showers and I'm doing my recovery and I'm training hard. I'm ha- that's when I'm happiest. Yeah, and is it is it is it a self of reward a reward as well? And because obviously, you need to be doing something you love to push you through that. Because there's shit, mate. I'm an electrician, and there's fucking plenty of shit things that I fucking do on a regular basis. But like, if you like, for example, like you, you love doing MMA and stuff, then the shit things make it easier because you know that it's going to improve your game in this sort of aspect. You yeah. know it's going to fucking work out better for you here. Your gas tank's going to be a little bit better for in the I actual fight. I look at it fire. that way. Yeah, I look at it that way. Like, like as, a, as, a, as a whole, yeah. I go, look, this will help this and this. But also I look at it short term, bro. That's Those morning showers and that those protein shake, that's not long term. Yep. That's short term. Yep. That's going, I will feel better immediately after I do those two things. Yep. Like I have a coffee, my shake, and my cold shower in whatever order I have it. But like that's what – wake up. If I do that, I'm immediately better. Yeah. 
And then if I train in the morning, I feel even better. I go, well, that's short term. That's not even long term. And then luckily, that actually adds to the long term. See, a short term thing, a lot of people do are like, oh, fuck. I'll have a dare iced coffee at the servo and a, and a, a traveller pie. Short term, you will feel good. Yeah. No, you for, won't no, even. Not even for five minutes. Five minutes, <laughs> you feel good. It's like KFC. Uh, I'm, I yeah, oh, bro. KFC is the same thing. You feel good. Quickest good to shit ratio ever. Oh, I had some today. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I had some today. Um, I need to say, I, I was running between classes yeah. and I was like, I need something. I was like, oh, I shouldn't have that. <laughs> I shouldn't have that. I can taste it now. I, I don't feel that way about Melbourne Bitter. I've never, <laughs> ever regretted a can of Melbourne. Thank you for everything. <laughs> That's from trial and error. He's had, he's had, he's had other ones and they've, they've done dirty oh, things to him. many shit beers. Don't you worry about that. Anything yeah. anything craft and anything, anything that's Not been- Not a crafty. Made, oh, mate. <laughs> throw it at the wall. <laughs> anything, that's been, anything that's not mass produced, I don't want a bar of it, eh? <laughs> mate, you, 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 you're, um, you're getting rid of all your, fit, your Fitzroy fans right now. All, <laughs> no. the, all the Brunswick cunts are like, oh, oh fuck, turn him off. I got in trouble because I went to one in- uh, Kensington and I asked for what tastes most like Carlton Draft Day and they said they said none of them I said oh, I don't want any of this then oh, I don't want beer that tastes like chocolate I don't want beer that tastes like mango Ooh, sour yeah. beer. Ooh. I don't want a sour word beer I want beer that tastes like beer I've trained myself for years and years to get good at drinking this. I don't want to tra- train myself. And, oh, well, this one tastes different. I don't want different. Yeah, I'm not prepared to change. So, yeah, with that aspect of my life, I'm not really willing to develop. Yeah. <laughs> and it is a, people don't understand. It is a train too, because like we obviously from like a young age, you like you pretend you like it because every cunt's like, yeah, fucking beer cunt, you're a pussy if you don't drink beer. So then you're, exactly. you're obviously like, yeah, fuck, I love it. But I think. I think kids our day, like out these days, they've got it easy. There's those Sun Tories going yeah, around. Those 196s. They're, they're pretty good. They are unreal. <laughs> and I go, all I know is I don't think I could have afforded them, but I know that like if I could have, if I had the money, that that's what I'd be drinking. Yeah. Those things are absolute, like they're incredible, are they? 1.6 standards. 1.6 standards. They've, there's no calories in them. Nah. They don't have that sugary aftertaste and they taste pretty good. No like, heartburn. Nothing. And, the, and you fucking the magical mag, magical Japanese drink, eh? Yeah, they make. You, yeah. I tell you what, though, some Suntories lead to bad decisions, and I'm yeah. Look, that you don't need to get loaded up on Suntories. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't need to smash too many. Oh, of them. just deal with the heartburn. <laughs> just get the sugar in you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking so uh, the the blue tick on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Oh, it was not even a big deal to me. I don't even care about it. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> I was there on the trip with two people with blue ticks on Instagram. I was with Daniel and Jimmy and I'm like, as soon as I got there and I was like, right, I know how this works. Because I got a blue tick on Twitter. I was like, I know how this works. Find the marketing guy. You, the, what do you mean find the marketing guy? Like? You find the marketing guy. So these big companies, if you're with a big company, so when I went to the Commonwealth Games, there was no Instagram blue ticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was a Twitter blue tick. That yeah. was the big thing then. Mm. And I was like, if you... F-, and then so someone's run into me and said, Jake, my teammate, he goes, I found the guy that can do give blue ticks on Twitter. I was like, bullshit. Well, let's go. Yeah, I was like, let's go. Because that was the only blue tick. That was the only... And then you, we found this. It was the, the marketing guy for the Com Games and they were mainly the swim team. I think. But... It, we went down there and he's like, please don't tell anyone else about this because I don't want every, every member of the Australian down. team coming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, gosh, I swear, I swear. I won't say a word. Boom, sends an email to Twitter. Um, just one more for Australian, this, under this verification, please. Sends it off next day. Blue tick on Twitter. So I know how it works. So because of that knowledge that I've had for f- over 10 years now, I've gone into this, well, I've gone, I'm signed to a big promotion. I went, all right, they're not just going to do this. They're not just going to just grab everyone's profiles. I said, where's the marketing guy? I said, where is he? You and asked I, for him? Yeah. Well, I was there at the press day and I was doing this and I'm doing all the interviews and everything. And I said, right, who can do the blue ticks on Instagram? And he's like, oh, that guy over there. I was like, go grab him, please. <laughs> I was like, I got his I'm WhatsApp. I'm having a word with him. Like, hey there, I was just wondering. And then, and then he... He didn't write back and I found the little runner, the guy that was helping me out. I said, bro, he didn't write back. He's like, oh, I'll, I'll go. So I talked to him. Next day, wake up, messaging a friend. 
do you have a blue tick? Oh my God, we've done it. <laughs> I, said, I said, you know, good times come and go. That blue tick's forever now. So. Doing the late and do it. Oh, I, on, I knew it. So like I said, I deserve it, but I played my cards right. I did definitely. <laughs> I, that's how you get it. That's how you get one. You can't just go through that. You know how people like apply themselves? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Never going to work. Never going to work. Never, would, I reckon Brad Pitt couldn't get one that way. You go through like companies that can get them that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's how, that's kids, how you get a blue tick on Instagram. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but um, that could pretty much wrap us up, bro. Fucking thanks heaps for coming on, man. My absolute pleasure. It's been an absolute fucking Rupert chat. Legend. Right. Legend. I'll see you around the traps. Yep, fucking oath. And everyone on the uh, biggest podcast in the Southern Hemisphere, make sure you uh, go see it. Fuck, you've got a strong grip. Fucking. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go follow Duke Didier, the Duke of Canberra, royalty. Thanks for having me. Love yous.